and welcome to our webinar today with the interesting title Scroll Free Turning from EMAC. Fast, precise, controlled. My name is Michael Sauter and I'm very pleased that so many of you are taking part today. We have two experts for this topic in the studio today. On the one hand, I would like to welcome Mr. Philip Rookweed very warmly. Since July 2011, he has been the Head of Technology Development and Testing Department at EMAC. On the other hand, we have another expert in the studio today. And I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Mr. Daniel Nille. Since 2009, he has been working in the Technology Development Department at EMAC and is the specialist for scroll-free turning technology. There it was from my side at first. I hope you enjoy the webinar and I will now hand over directly to Philip. Yes, hello from my side. Because we made some new developments the last month, especially for the soft machining, we decided to do the webinar now to show you our best options with scroll-free turning. Yeah, let's start my presentation. During my presentation, you will see the slides and my cursor. As Micha mentioned uh, before, please ask uh, your questions after the presentation or write uh, during the presentation uh, in the chat option. You see here also the word skiving we used in the past for the today's scroll free turning process. Um, we define because of different meanings of the of the word skiving, uh, it's better to use uh, the new words scroll free turning um, a few years ago. A rotor shaft is a good part to show the benefits of the scroll free turning process. Not only diameters of the shaft can be machined. This is somehow new that we also machine the rotor laminations with the scroll-free turning process. At the rotor, there are sealing seats where no lead normally is required. The surface must be scroll-free, but also other surface requirements are necessary for, for example, bearing seats. You will see later the special requirements, I will show you uh, this. And for the soft machining of the sheet metal package, it's a good option to be fast because somehow it's the longest diameter to be machined. And if you have a fast process, it's a good benefit, a good productivity to use this at the rotor shaft machining. In the past, the machining of shafts with this special surface requirement was mainly done or very often done with the grinding technology. Uh, here you see a process plan or process design uh, EMAC used in the past. Uh, you see here our VTC 100 GT as a combined machining. On the left side, a turret. On the right side, a grinding wheel. And we had some projects where we used the turret for diameter machining and for scroll-free diameters or it depends on the tolerance. We use the grinding wheel. It depends on the, on the parts requirements. And today we are able to machine this kind of, of surface requirements with a turning process. Now let's start with uh, surfaces and requirements for sealing seats. Here you can see what means a twist on the surface from a turning operation. With the radius of the insert together with the feed rate, you will get some yeah, creases, which means a twist on the surface by machining with the turning operation. And this creases are like a, a warm screw or a warm gear and support dust or oil, depending to the rotation direction, in or from the sealed area. And therefore, to, to get a 
better surface rolling is no option because you only gladden uh, the tops of this creases. What do you see on the drawing? For example, there's a sign no lead on the surface. It means scroll free or twistless. Sometimes you see the sign grinded or grinding. Very often, this is the meaning of scroll free, no lead. We also have requirement for the roughness and very often between R set one and four. Smaller or below R set one means there is no rest of roughness where oil is still in the valleys of the surface. And without oil uh, on the ceiling seats, they uh, probably heat up and the ceiling can be damaged. That's why very often with uh, scroll-free requirements, you see are set between one and four. It uh, worse than four is um, too much. There's no uh, ceiling uh, of the of the seat, and in between these limits, the surface need to be prepared. There's somehow also an angle listed, angle zero, or a direction of an angle. This means with the rotation of the part, there is a, is a way how a twist are acceptable on the surface. And somehow the maximum roughness is limited or the deep of the surface, you will see it later, of the, the scrolling deep is limited. This is also because of the rest of oil on the surface and we can check these surfaces by special measurement devices for example from company Hommel we have a device from company Remok and there are somehow more information the technicians who develop or who design the ceiling uh, connection. They, for example, need the peak to valley cross section to know how much oil is left on the surface um, because this oil is needed um, for greasing somehow the ceiling ring um, and to, to get it not that hot in uh, during rotation. Let's talk about the machine we normally or mostly use for this scrofy turning process. It's our shaft machining types, VT4, VT200, which means the Siemens control system. And we developed the, the technology a few years ago with the VTC250. All these mas machines, the, the strength lies in the four axis machining of shafts up to 630 millimeters in length. Uh, there's an automated work handling system in this machine. So loading and unloading is handled by two turrets. You will see it in the next slides. And this is the main benefit for axis machining and loading and unloading. Here you see the machining area when we put off the front doors uh, to show it. You have two turrets, one on the left side, one on the right side, and the work spindle with the C-axis in the middle. On the left and on the right side, normally the automation. And on the bottom, a tailstock. Also, a steady rest is possible within these machines. I explain this with the small machine type VT2. VT2 means two times 50 millimeters can be machined. So diameter 100 is possible with this machine. With the VT4, it's diameter 200. Here you see the axis of this machines, all 
turret has normally X and Z axis. Uh, optionally, a Y axis is possible. In the middle, you have the W axis, where the main spindle is positioned with the C axis. And the rotation of the turrets are also axis A1 and A2. The principle of loading and unloading in one flow, you see here all both turrets has one gripper and 11 tool spaces. And the right gripper takes the finished part and put it out of the machine to the right automation. And uh, in the same time, the left turret takes a raw part and puts it into the main spindle, into the clamping of uh, for the part. And with this both turrets, you can use it for full access machining of turning mainly shafts. So for the scroll-free turning process, we use as feed rate the turning of the special scroll-free scroll turning turrets. It's with a static tool and with this movement, we create the feed rate with the rotation. With a straight cutting edge, you need a compensation movement with the X axis. Uh, the workpiece normal <laughs> with the turning operation is rotating and super imposed uh, a feed in Z direction is possible, but it's not for twist-free or scroll-free surfaces. When you use the Z movement, you will also get a scroll on the surface. So only with the rotation of the turret, the scroll-free process is possible. You will see it later in, well, in the next um, slide. In the next slides uh, with the videos. So the cutting speed is done like conventional turning with the diameter of the workpiece and the uh, uh, cutting speed, the workpiece speed. Feed rate is done with the scroll free turning turret and you need this compensation movement. And this compensation movement in X direction is carried out during the feed movement. So the X axis is prepared, specially prepared for this kind of technology. Yes, let's start the video. So you see here in the video, the rotation of the turret and the movement of the cutting point along the cutting edge. So every point or area of the cutting edge is very low in contact with the part. That's why the tool life is very, very high. For example, with hard machining, if you have a tool life of 200 parts with conventional hard turning, um, we say at least 10 times higher tool life than with conventional turning. And this is because of the movement of the yeah, cutting point along the cutting edge. You see here, the insert is, has a f angle to the, to the parts, um, axis, to the rotation axis of the part. Normally it's 45 degrees. And with the length of the cutting edge, to the part when you don't use the set axis movement we show here in the video the maximum length of the insert to the part is the limit for the scroll free or the twistless surface i want to show this here the possible lengths of scroll free turning um uh in in comparison with the grinding wheel with the grinding, the cutting length depends to the grinding wheel. You can 
increase the grinding wheel and uh, machine a bigger length. Also, you can do it in two or three cuts to get the scroll-free surface. With the scroll-free turning technology, the length of the cutting edge is the limit for the scroll-free length. And with the 45 degrees, it's um, uh, you have to calculate what the maximum length is. We normally use the smallest possible inserts because of the tool costs. If you use the set axis, the, you can increase the cutting length, but only for fast uh, and good surfaces, not for scroll-free surfaces. And you see here, the cycle time is much faster with the scroll-free turning or the skiving process than this conventional grinding or hard turning. It's always much faster. Depending to the surface requirement, the, the tool builder need to prepare the insert in different ways. For example, a ceiling seat surface, which need to be between R set one and four. The surface requirement also is R max 6.3. The scrolling deep DT is limited to 1.2 micrometer. And this is possible with uh, a special insert. We, with one insert, we had um, results between RZ 2.6 and RZ 2.9. The uh, scrolling deep was between this area and also the, the cross section uh, was uh, inside the limits. If you want the best surface of uh, scroll-free process, of scroll-free um, technology surfaces, it's also possible to prepare the inserts to R set one, but then the scrolling deep or the cross section is also mathematically or, or physically going with this um, requirements. You cannot have a scrolling deep from 0 0.8 with a R set one requirement. This is not possible. So somehow this is the limit. It depends on the requirement. And what, what I want to mention is our tool suppliers. We have different tool suppliers. They are able to prepare the cutting edge to the requirement um, needed for your machining. Coming to bearing seats, the, the special requirement for bearing seats is very often the material fraction, RMR. This means there are not that much peaks into the surface profile. And this tops, this peaks, can be reduced by a roller burnishing process. You can use, you see here, a standard tool, roller burnishing tool, and it's uh, after the, the finish turning process, you use this tool um, with somehow this um, process data and get the surface requirement. It's, it's gladden this peaks, this tops uh, of the surface profile. With the scroll-free turning process, you implement these two steps into one finish machining. Um, I'll start my video. As you see here, we do face machining on this um, electromotor shaft, pre-machining, of the diameter. We need pre-machining because of the limits of deep of cuts with the scroll-free process. And you see now bearing seat, hardened bearing seat and ceiling seat with the scroll-free turning process. Feed rate is 0 0.15 millimeters of each revolution. And now we do the soft machining of the main shaft with feed rate 0 0.3 and we'll get the form tolerances inside eight microns. The R set 
is four on the soft machining with this high feed rate. At the end, it gets hard. Yeah. It's, and with this process, it's much faster to machine this electromotor shaft with this surface requirements than conventionally. And it's also possible to do it with dry machining because of the uh, of the of the small contact time of each area of the cutting edge the the tool and the complete process is not heating up that much than with conventional turning with dry machining this is also a main benefit of this technology you can add coolant um, this is no problem with this technology, but normally we do it with dry machining. Not only for the shaft of the electro motor, also for the rotor packets, you can use the scroll free turning process, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. And you see here, we do a rough cut with high feed rate to get the chips. Uh, broken uh, with this rotor package it's uh, feed rate 0 0.8 and then we use the scroll free turning process with one millimeter feed rate to finish the surface to get asset 6.3 with this high feed rate and also for the break of the chips with this um, sheet metal packages it's uh, very good um solution to have the scroll free turning process run and it's now our standard way to do this application you see here the benefit you get with this with this high feed rate with uh, conventional turning to get our set 6.3 as your goal with uh, inserts with cutting edge 0 0.4, you'll need around 3.4 seconds uh, for diameter 45, length 20 millimeters. With the scroll free turning process, you only need around 0 0.5 seconds. So it's six to seven times faster. Because of high radial forces with the feed rate with the movement of the turret it's somehow limited with the deep of cut and the feed rate in uh, comparison so if you have a big deep of deep of cut you have to reduce somehow the feed rate for scroll free surfaces the feed rate is limited to 0 0.15 millimeter each turn it's because the chip is running along the surface, the diameter, like with every turning process. If the feed rate is too high, it all you also get a lead or a twist on the surface. That's why it's a little limited. So the scroll free is in comparison to the grinding, but to get best surface finishes, um, it's a much faster solution. It's always a much faster solution. As I mentioned, high radial forces, um, you need to avoid clamping, excuse me, clamping with a face driver, uh, especially for the hard machining. A face driver is not the best option. Therefore, collet chuck or the AMAC special um, shaft machining chuck is the better option. It's possible to use uh, steady rest um, depending to the part and the feed rate in direction to the main spindle is also an issue we normally use to get the, the rest of the set axis cutting force in direction of the main spindle. As I mentioned before, we have a lot of machines operating with the scroll free turning process today the vtc 250 or vtc 250 duo uh, also the vtc 100 or in the past the vlc 250 
But today, our standard machines are now prepared for the scroll-free turning process. The VT4, but also the yeah, check machines, VL2 and VL8 with uh, Y-axis or VL3 Duo are able to do scroll-free turning. And this is really new um, that we adapt this um, this technology to our standard machines. Best practice, as you see here, we have more than 30 machines running VTC 250 with this process. Here you see a really new machine, VT2 SD. But we also have VL4 running with this process. So we are, um, the, the option is the complete turning machine types of EMAC with this can, can run this process. Yes, a summary. I hope I could show you that uh, this process is um, one of the fastest turning operations for, for best surface requirement on diameters. There's a newer technology also for face machining called roll-free turning, which we developed with Vandorit. Um, maybe we'll do a webinar uh, in the future to show you this process. For scroll-free turning, you have a small invest with using standard machines to use this technology. Dry machining is possible with fastest cutting speeds. And it's possible for hard and for soft machining. This is uh, the, the main advantage, and I want to give you this information um, for your processes and your projects in the future. So thank you very much for that time. And now I'll give back to Micha and um, looking forward for your. Thank you, Philip, and for you, welcome back. As already mentioned, we will now come to our question section. Ah, one is come? Excellent. Is it necessary to use a, a CAM system for the programming? It's not necessary to use a CAM uh, software for the programming. It's uh, done like uh, conventional turning programming. Mr. Nille made a cycle to do it. Yes, I wrote a cycle who makes it easy to program the uh, scroll-free turning. It's uh, You can handle it like uh, a normal turning process. Uh, you give the cycle some parameters like uh, the cutting speed, the feed rate and so on and the, the cycle calculates the rest in the background and makes the movement of the axis. For existing customer of VT2 uh, for a machine it is required to buy any extra software for scroll free turning? The, the cycle um, Daniel Man uh, uh, mentioned um, has to be uh, bought uh, from EMAC and I think the machine must be checked the movement of the axis uh, to be prepared for the system but give us your um, serial number of the machine your project number and we can check um, if we can use the existing machine for the scroll free turning process. If there is no undercut at the end of the diameter but a radius it is possible to machine into the radius at the end? It is possible. Normally we say uh, undercut is the best option because the end of the cutting edge is the most, um, there's the most strength for the cutting edge, but we can um, prepare or the tool supplier can prepare the cutting edge with a radius. Maybe there's some, um, some form, uh, um, contour change um, between two radius from the pre-machining, but we solved this issue in the past. You made some tests also with <coughs> a chamfer. Yes, we also had we had chamfer, we had a radius at the end of the cutting edge. It's possible, but you have to know that the tool life is not so high than if you have uh, 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 um, undercut at the end. Yeah. What about handling the technology with programming and tooling? Is it possible? 
for my operators at a machine to solve it. The same as we said, uh, you can, it's easy to handle, you can use the cycle for uh, the scroll free turning, it's no problem. And there's also the option that um, the application engineers from my team or from other uh, AMAC teams um, will help you um, in, by phone or uh, in front of the machine. Mm. This is also an option. Does VT2 machines have scroll-free turning? We do not prefer the VT2 machine because of the small uh, the smaller tail stock than the VT4 machine or the bigger shaft uh, machine types. Uh, we solved it in the past, some, some project with the machine, but we prefer the bigger machine, the VT4. It's because of the high radial forces mm -hmm. um, you have to manage. Is it possible to use the technology on face machining? No, it's not possible, no, you can answer. It's not possible to use the scroll free turning for face machining. It's only possible for our cylinders. Uh, for the face machine, we have another technology. There you have uh, a curved edge which, uh, which you roll on the cylinder or on the uh, face. And with this one, it's possible to do a scroll free turning on a on yeah, the on the face machine. Um, yeah. But with uh, scroll free turning, it's not possible. It's, it's grooving at the end. Uh, it's, it's not easy to explain, it's mathematics. Um, that's why we um, developed the roll free turning process together with company Vandurit, the tool supplier. Um, and you'll have give, I can give you some more information directly or you can see it on our website. Maybe we'll do one of our next webinars with the roll free turning process too. What about the tool life and costs? Philip? Yes, as I mentioned in my presentation, the complete cutting edge is used. That's why um, the tool life is much higher than this conventional hard turning. Um, for example, when we do a pre-machining for hard turning because of the limited depth of cut, um, when we have 400 parts, I know a, a project or a series running, we have 400 parts with the conventional hard turning CBN inset and with the, with the scroll free turning inset, we have more than uh, 4,000 parts to life with one inset. Um, and we go up to, uh, you heard the more. Yeah, we have some customers who cut uh, more than 10,000 uh, yeah. parts with one uh, cutting. It, it depends to the, to the part material and the coating. The, yeah. the tool supplier can optimize in a few steps. I can say the, the tool costs of each part for the finish operation will be reduced with the scroll free turning process always. But the, the, the most benefit is the faster machining or if you can avoid grinding uh, of scroll free mm. surfaces. The, the tool life also depends on the um, requirement for the surface quality. If you have a surface quality which can be better than R set one, it's no problem. You have a higher tool life because the cutting edge has a special um, uh, it's, right. it's special that it's it's getting uh, smoother and yeah. uh, over the over the life over the tool life, right? over the uh, tool life and if not sometimes we have a requirement RA zero point two to RA zero point eight and then the end of tool life is if the surface quality is too good. Yeah, it's a difference to other uh, machining operations or to other turning uh, operations. Is it possible to machine a part with interrupt cut with scroll free turning? Yes, for sure. Um, because we have the, the 45 degrees angle as you see um, here, also uh, here in our studio. Um, with the 45 degrees angle, the start of the cut and the end of the cut uh, in the interrupted area is very smooth. It's uh, the, the 45 degrees angle is damping and uh, the, I think it's much better. You also hear it during the machining that it's uh, much softer than uh, with conventional hard turning. Yeah, it's also possible to turn over a tool thing. We, have, we did some parts, it was never a problem. Yeah. What is the lowest tol tolerance we can achieve with this process? It 
depends on the quality requirements. Um, we made the, the, um, the contact point is moving along the cutting edge. That's why the, the tool is not heating up that much. So, and this is very good for, for um, yeah, temperature management in the complete machine. We solved um, IT6 with quality requirement uh, CM 1.67. It's uh, 30 microns diameter tolerance and we machined uh, inside of 8 microns, I think, to get this CM bigger than 1.67 uh, quality requirement. If the, part, if the part is a stable clamp, you can uh, get the roundness better than one micron or cylinder form, um, maybe five micron, yeah. but it depends on the clamping of the part. Yeah, very, very important yeah. information. Uh, the, the higher radial forces than conventional turning uh, needs a good clamping. Okay. We would like to thank you once again for one, for your participation. As mentioned by Philip, have a look on the webinar schedule and maybe the roll fit turning is one of the next technologies we will present to you. Maybe we will meet us again at one of these next webinars. Until then, goodbye and stay healthy.